we present FastNerve, a neural radiance fields method capable of rendering high fidelity content orders of magnitude faster than previous approaches. Neural radiance fields, or NERF for short, is a recent method that allows for capturing a high quality representation of a 3D scene within the weights of a neural network. This network maps position and direction to color and density, which can be integrated using traditional volume rendering. The one downside of NERF is that it takes dozens of seconds to render a single image. This means that in order to run NERF at interactive frame rates, resolution needs to be drastically reduced. To overcome this limitation, we introduce FastNERF, a method that accelerates NERF's test time speed by 3000 times while largely retaining visual quality. The reason for NERF's slow test time speed is that its MLP needs to be queried more than 100 times for every generated image pixel. For large images, this requires millions of forward passes through the network. Given that the main performance bottleneck of NERF is the number of samples, and thus network forward passes, prior work has explored reducing this number of samples by focusing them on regions of 3D space where there is density to integrate. In neural sparse voxel fields, the authors learn a sparse grid that can subsequently be used to sample only occupied areas of the integration domain. Instead of relying on a fixed grid, DONERF uses a depth oracle network to provide an importance distribution per image pixel and thus per ray. While such methods can provide significant speedups, they still require evaluating a costly MLP for each sample they do require taking. In what we propose to do instead is to replace the neural network with a cache that can be efficiently queried at test time. To generate the cache, we sample the input space of the network in a way that covers the scene we are modeling. We then capture the network output for those samples and save the input-output pairs in the cache. Note that the cache needs to be generated only once and after the training is complete. To apply this caching scheme to NERF, we would need to create a single cache for its five-dimensional input space. Such a cache would scale proportionally to the number of bins per dimension to the fifth power. Even for moderate cache resolutions, this means the cache size quickly becomes prohibitive. To make caching feasible, we propose a new graphics-inspired neural network architecture, which we call FastNerf. FastNerf factorizes the problem into two subnetworks, one that is dependent only on sample position and one that depends only on the ray direction. The position-dependent network outputs a deep radiance map. The view-dependent network outputs weights that scale the components of the deep radiance map to obtain a final RGB value at each sample position as seen from the specified direction. FastNerf's factorized architecture allows for separately caching the position and direction dependent networks. This makes caching feasible as it avoids the memory explosion of a five-dimensional cache. Note that since FastNerf uses the same set of inputs and outputs as NERF, it can be used as a drop-in replacement for many methods that already use NERF. Here is a visualization of the deep radiance map components produced by the position-dependent network. Once combined using the view-dependent weights, these components allow for reconstructing view-dependent effects such as specular reflections. While the deep radiance map components and their weights could be stored in a regular grid, this can be made more efficient by exploiting the empty space surrounding many main-made objects. To this end, we store all caches in sparse hierarchical volumetric grids that can be queried efficiently at inference time. Using FastNerf means that we do not need to evaluate any MLPs at inference time once the cache is constructed. This means that required computation reduces to a series of dot products and aggregation of values along each ray, making the algorithm limited by memory bandwidth instead of compute. Good performance thus means both reducing the amount of times values need to be looked up in the cache and the amount of bits required to store each cache entry. To reduce the amount of cache lookups, we construct a simplified triangle mesh from the density grid using marching cubes and use it to skip empty space for each ray. This can be done efficiently on modern GPUs that support hardware accelerated ray tracing. In addition to reducing the amount of required cache lookups, 
we compress all grid values to 16-bit float, which we found to have no significant impact on our results. Here, we show a performance comparison of Fastner rendering a single 800 by 800 pixel image, even using a cache resolution of 1024 for the deep readiness map cache, our method can achieve well over 100 frames per second on a single RTX 3090 GPU. At the time of writing, this was at least an order of magnitude ahead of competing methods. In terms of required memory, we generally find that caches at 512 resolution of reasonably sparse scenes fit in under 4 GB of GPU memory when values are compressed to 16-bit float. Please note that we did not make any additional effort to specify what the NERF networks learn at training or inference time, and that our grids do not store values at multiple resolutions. In the following few slides, we show a qualitative comparison to NERF on the synthetic dataset and the LLFF dataset. Here, we show a side-by-side -side comparison with NERF on the left and FastNERF on the right. Here we show the reconstructed radiance as a function of direction at three discrete points distributed across the scene. Note that the specular reflection seen prominently for the bottom point, P2, is present even when using four components. In practice, we found that six or eight components give quality comparable to NERF while keeping cache size manageable. Here, we demonstrate how cache size influences render quality. Caching a trained model allows our method to easily trade memory for quality as required, much like LODs do in computer graphics. We observe that the direction-dependent network can sometimes overfit to the data, which results in flickering as the camera position changes. To counteract this, we propose to simply use a smaller cache size for the direction-dependent component weights. Please see the supplementary materials for further details. Since we use nearest neighbor lookups for the RGBD caches, some aliasing artifacts can be observed, even at high cache resolutions. We found this to be most noticeable in results on the LLFF dataset, as shown here. We note that these can be mitigated by supersampling an image or 3D space at the expected computational overhead. While caching to a fixed grid can cause a small amount of aliasing when combined with nearest neighbor sampling, FastCurve can also increase image quality compared to NERF. One such case is the preservation of thin or transparent structures. Here, baseline NERF's fixed per ray sampling budget is at a disadvantage compared to FastNERF, where we can visit every single cached voxel until a ray is saturated. This guarantees the reproduction of all detail learned by the model at the chosen cache resolution. In these examples, the drum set and rigging exhibit more consistent and clear fine detail in the highlighted areas. Our method can be applied to a variety of scenarios enabled by extensions to NERF. Here, we show an example application to telepresence, where we train FastNERF on a sequence of a person performing facial expressions. To allow for expression reconstruction, we add a deformation network that is conditioned on the expression coefficients of a face model fitted to the training sequence. This additional network transforms the input sample positions to a canonical space. As fast nerve takes only a few milliseconds to render these images, the deformation network becomes the main bottleneck. This lets us achieve 30 frames per second in practice. We would like to point out these three pieces of excellent concurrent work that also achieve real-time frame rates. Due to its simplicity and generality, we hope that FastNerf will enable the use of neural rendering on consumer devices, including for virtual and augmented reality applications. For further details, please see our paper. Thank you.